Good evening, folks, and Happy New Year. It's Lynn Garvey Hodge, your new chairperson, and uh, we are beginning our meeting tonight at 730. We have a wonderful turnout. We've got 20 of you and both of our new commissioners are here. So uh, thank you very, very much for for being here. Um, a little point of order question. Should I do? Yes, I should probably do the audibility questions now. Uh, before we really get too far in, in, into the meeting. So, David, I will, David Meyer, I will need your uh, help. There will be a time when I will need to pass the gavel to someone and it will go to you. And you will then need to call the question to the motion I have just made. And if we need any coaching along the way, Esther McCullough is our coach. Okay. All right. To conduct this meeting wholly electronically, the Fairfax County History Commission needs to make certain findings for this with all applicable laws. These motions address this compliance. First, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each board member participating in this meeting to state your name and your location. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. OK, I'll, I'll begin with me, Lynn Garvey Hodge. Uh, and I am currently located within the Springfield district. All right, so I'm going to go along the screen here. Elise, let's do you next. Elise Murray, Indiana. Ooh. Okay, we heard it, Vienna. Elise Murray, town of Vienna. Okay, Martin wonderful. Vienna. Okay. All right, David Meyer. This is David Meyer from the city of Fairfax. All right, Tammy. This is Tammy Manorino, Mount Vernon District. All right, Esther. Esther McCullough, Sully District. Okay, Ann. Ann Barnes, Mount Vernon District. Excellent. Tom. Tom Shoup, Braddock District. OK, Kevin. Um, <clears throat> Kevin Bradley, I'm in the Braddock district. OK. And and as I mentioned to some of you before, Kevin is our, our archaeologist. Gretchen. Gretchen Bulova, Braddock district. All right, let's see, where am I? Uh, Janae, I see your name on here. Uh, unmute yourself. Janae Lindner, Springfield district. Excellent. Okay. Um, oh, I don't know who this next person is. Oh, this is a guest. Who would be Jay Gilbert too? Sorry, that's me. I'm uh, Jenna Gilbert from the Springfield District with the Heritage Conservation Branch. Okay, wonderful. Nice to nice to have you join us tonight. And your first name again is Jenna. Jenna, yes. Jenna, wonderful. Welcome, Jenna. Yeah, I, I, can everyone hear me? Hi, this is Stephanie Langton with the Heritage Conservation Branch. <clears throat> yes. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. We can. I wanted to to, to introduce uh, Jenna. She joined our team over the summer um, with the Heritage Conservation Branch, um, and she'll be joining us for Heritage uh, for History Commission meetings um, throughout you know every other month or so. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you for taking a moment to introduce her. Okay, and we've got Kevin. We can hear you, Kevin. Okay. Me again, or yeah, different Kevin? Just, I just want to make sure I we, we can hear you. Okay. Oh, yep. Sorry. All right, and then Laura. Laura Kavikla's staff with DPD. I'm the History Commission liaison. Okay, and I've already gotten Sally. Um, Sue. Uh, Sue Kovac Schumann representing Providence District in beautiful Mantua next to Fairfax City. All right. Okay. And uh, I think I've already, Tammy, I've already done done you. I've already done Amy. Uh, I don't know who this last phone number is. Any idea? Who's it? Who's it? 703 302 9994. That is me, uh, Steve Sherman. Uh, in Franconia, representing the Franconia district. Perfect. Okay, I think I've got everyone. Does that no, sound? Have I, have I, have I, who, who did I call? 
You want to call Ann Stunts? Oh, Ann Stunts. I'm sorry, you. I don't see you on my list, and I don't. There you are up at the top. Okay, it alphabetized. Ann How Stunts. It does move around. Ann Stunts, Hunter Mill District. And okay. I heard some other. I heard another voice. Yes, Jordan. Yes, it's Jordan Tannenbaum uh, in the ancestral land of the Dog Nation, uh, and currently the Springfield District. That's so wonderful. Okay, have I left anyone out? Uh, Carol Herrick. Thank you, Carol. I don't see. Drainsville District. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yes, and formally, Sally Lyons, uh, Colchester, Mount Vernon District. Wonderful. Thanks, Sally. And Chris Barbershock, I see, is on here now. Chris Barbershock, Virginia. Okay. And uh, I already called Anne. And anybody else I missed? I think we got everyone. All right, at this point, I'm gonna pass the virtual gavel to the vice chair, that's David, so that I may make the appropriate motion. And then after that, David, please call the question. I move that the Fairfax County History Commission can certify for the record that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of the board. This I'm is second. Esther, I'm second. Okay. okay. All right, you wanna call the question, David? Okay, um, is there anyone um, who is, can, can everyone hear everyone else? Is that the question? Yes, yes, and so just we'll do, do uh, we'll make it an a, 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 a or an A. All right. Um, all, in favor. All, in, all in favor of the of the motion, please signify it by saying aye. 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 Uh, and if any opposed? Okay, and we, Passes unanimously. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. Second, I move that the Fairfax County History Commission certify the state of emergency caused by the COVID pandemic makes it unsafe for this commission and the public to physically attend this meeting in person and the usual procedures cannot be implemented safely or practically. As a result, I further move that the F Fairfax County History Commission conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated video and audio conferencing line and that the public may access this meeting by calling uh, 571-429-5982. And the uh, phone conference ID is 993-767-333. Uh, all right, so that was the motion. Can I have a second to that, please? Second. I'll second it. Okay. All right, sure. David, you're on again. All right, all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. And vote passes unanimously. Okay. And finally, I move Fairfax County History Commission certify that the matters on its agenda today relate to the COVID-19 emergency itself and are necessary for continuity in Fairfax County government and or are statutorily required to, to continue necessary operations and the discharge of the commission's lawful purposes, duties and responsibilities. OK. All in second. favor of that, go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry, I forgot about the second. Yeah, Esther seconded that. David, go ahead. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. All and right. Sure, we're, we're ready to go. OK, wonderful. And I'll take um, the Lynn, I just thought of one person that we didn't call their name, um, Subi Medi. I don't think we called her she's, name. She's not here. OK, so she's I just wanted to family. She's excused. She is an excused absence and she is back from Antarctica and took a polar plunge while she was there. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh, that's crazy. Did we call Bob Beaches? Is, is, did Bob make it? I didn't see his name on here, Anne. Thank you for asking. Um, let me look a little bit further again. I do not see him. So if he does pop up, somebody let me know. Okie doke. Yeah, I arrived late. I apologize. Who's that? Is that Cheryl? Was yeah. That we should... yeah, Cheryl. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. I don't see your name on here just yet. Okay. Um, and everybody heard Cheryl just then, right? Mm -hmm. Okie doke. Right. Um, I want to do a mini welcome in a minute, but first of all, I am going to give the floor to David Meyer, the, the, our uh, most current mayor of the city of Fairfax. David and I had some wonderful conversations leading up to um, 
are accepting the roles on the slate of nominations. And uh, David has just accomplished some amazing things in the last few months with the city of Fairfax. And I think just listening to them for a few minutes, I made reference to them in our last meeting, uh, will give us all a real sense of strength and motivation for the new year and be able to help us really uh, welcome well David in this role. So, David. Well, thank you, Lynn. Uh, I, first, I want to um, uh, say my apologies for not being present at last month's meeting. I had a significant program that I had to attend, which precluded me from joining you at that very special uh, in-person meeting. And so uh, my apologies for that. And um, secondly, I want to uh, add my words of welcome to Tom and to Kevin and to Jenna uh, from our uh, staff. I hope that she finds this to be a professionally uh, uh, en enhancing experience for her. The, as you may know, this is, I, I announced in uh, early May that I would not seek re-election after 14 and a half years in elected office. And I quickly made a bucket list of things that I wanted the city to do before I left office. And they were rather significant for a small jurisdiction. Any one of these things during a four month period would be a significant achievement. But uh, and I don't I'm not taking all the credit for this because I, you know, I I had to work with six very different individuals, plus the staff, plus the community. However, in the short period of time of four months, we did several significant things, not historically related per se, but we. Um, we adopted a new fiscal policy, increasing our cash reserves from 10 to 15%, which is, represents several pennies on the tax rate. And we renewed our AAA bond rating, which is the lifeblood of any local jurisdiction. We uh, passed a five cent bag tax, which I know the county's had that for some time. However, for the city, that was a significant move forward. We implemented a stormwater utility program. <laughs> effective July 1, which also is going to move the city forward in terms of environmental protection. We uh, voted unanimously to construct 10 affordable housing townhouses on the campus of Fairfax Presbyterian Church, which is a, um, a multi-million dollar project and really uh, cutting edge from a city planning perspective to address affordable housing. And uh, the very last meeting of my tenure and of the old city council, we voted unanimously to tear down a small 1952 motel on US Route 50 and construct a five story, 54 unit permanent supportive housing facility to handle the, or to, to provide housing for the chronically homeless. These are individuals who have no money and no place to live. Now, um, uh, there are only two affordable, there are three permanent supportive housing projects in Northern Virginia, one in Alexandria, one in Arlington, and I think one in, in near Bailey's Crossroads, but every one of them is only eight or 10 units. This is 54 units, and it is the only permanent supportive housing project that is completely funded by a nonprofit. This, all the other three were all built by local governments. So this was a collaborative effort among about 100 congregations in the greater Fairfax, central Fairfax area. Many of those are outside the city in the county. And um, it was a very interesting coalition of citizens that came together. But the, um, the new council has moved in uh, into their seats uh, last night. And the docket has been cleared with hardly any controversial issues that they have to address at all. And it was a it was a it was a very exciting time, and I hope it, to to um, work with all of you to um, to say that the commission can do bold things as well. We've done some remarkable things in the past, and I think that we have tremendous promise in the ensuing year, and in the ensuing few years ahead of us to accomplish some really um, important things in the area of, of historic preservation. And um, I will also say that because all of our um, 
elected representatives in the US Congress uh, can now um, entertain requests for earmarks. I would like for the, the city, for the, um, the History Commission to think creatively about how we might go about seeking some significant federal monies for certain projects. So this will require a lot of discussion and thought uh, among all of us and um, some, uh, and we may or may not be successful, but my philosophy is that if we do not, if we don't, if we do not ask, if we ask, we're not guaranteed success, but if we don't ask, we are guaranteed uh, not to succeed, not to, to we're guaranteed failure. So um, I think that um, we have a, a lot of promise and a lot of exciting opportunities to do some, some significant things moving forward. And I, I want to express my appreciation to everyone in the past who's on this call who have been in leadership positions with the commission, especially Cheryl. I, you did a great job for us in the last term. Thank you. And I appreciate your, the time you spent with me to orient me with this group of incredible people. And I thank you personally for that. So, so those are my comments and um, looking forward to a really phenomenal year. And the city of Fairfax will, I'm going to do all I can to remain a, a gratis sponsor of the history conference next fall. Okay, so let's just see whether, I can't make any promises, but I can promise that I will do everything I can to try. Okay, all right, thank you, Lynn. All right, thank you, David. It's a joy to have you on board. It was a joy to have you on the conference committee. I really appreciate your last comment. And folks, I think you have a really wonderful understanding now of some of the strength and experience that, that David now can, can bring to us. Um, want to say thank you again to Cheryl. I won't repeat the little poem that, that I did at the, the last meeting, but it was uh, a joy to honor somebody that has really given her all and has always done so with such a good attitude. I want to welcome our two new commissioners. And by the way, if you're not speaking, would you all, it looks like most of you are set up for this right now. Go ahead and please uh, mute yourselves. So we've got Tom and we've got Kevin. And uh, if you could take just a couple of minutes right now to one one paragraph, give us a little bit of information about who you are. Tom, let's begin with you. All right. Um, I've uh, been a Fairfax County resident for over 30 years. Um, 28 of those in the Braddock district. Um, I have, I'm a career journalist working for an organization called Government Executive, which produces a series of publications for people at all levels of government. Um, and I, about a year ago, I stepped back to, uh, sort of an at-large position to focus more on things like this and my own uh, research. Um, I've long been interested in the county's history. I live a few blocks from Oak Hill, and the day I walked by there and wondered, hmm, what is that? Uh, and I ended up writing a story about it, um, and I've been hooked ever since. Um, uh, I, the project that I'm currently working on is a history of the ILDA community at 236 and Guinea Road, which is currently undergoing a lengthy academic <laughs> at the University of Virginia Press. So that's me. All right, wonderful. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. I'm, I'm not sure who that is. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we've already started our, our buddy system and Tom's buddy is Jordan. So Jordan and Tom, good luck. Highly recommend you go to our website, talk through some good things there and um, come back with more questions that you might have. But welcome again, Tom. It's good to have you here this evening. And Kevin, if you would give us a little overview of, of who you are. We know there is a rousing birthday party downstairs, but we also know we're more fun. <laughs> it's, okay. it, that's true. It sounds like it's winding down, which is good because it's almost her bedtime, but she just had cakes. So I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon. So, oh. you know, my wife's downstairs. I'm sure she has it all under control. Yep. Um, so, yeah, my name's uh, Kevin. Um, I'm, I'm happy to say that I 
I do recognize a few names and faces on here, um, either through conferences or meetings and things like that. So it's nice to see some familiar faces. Um, like like Lynn said, I'm an archaeologist. I work for a company called New South Associates, which um, up until a year ago uh, only ever had offices in the South, uh, so North Carolina on down. Um, when I, I talked to my current boss about job opportunities, uh, he was interested in opening an office in Virginia and offered me that position. And so I run the the Virginia branch of New South Associates, which which uh, last uh, since last December was out of my house. Um, but I'm happy to say we actually just signed uh, an agreement to get into an office in Fairfax City. And so our physical location is going to be in Fairfax City, um, I think starting this month. Um, so that's very exciting for me and uh, for my family who uh, will now gain back some of the space in our house uh, when I get rid of all of our office stuff out of here. Um, but I'm uh, Virginia born and raised. I was born up here actually, moved down to Stafford and grew up there and then came back up here, uh, got married and then moved to Texas and Philadelphia and did archaeology in both those places. And then about uh, five and a half years ago, moved back down here to sort of raise our family here next to all of our other family. And uh, yeah, been here since. And I live, I actually live uh, right near the Elda community, so 236 in Guinea. And so I'm very familiar with that, Tom. And I'll be looking forward to seeing what you write about it. Great. Good, good, good. Well, welcome again, um, Kevin and and Sally. Thank you for taking the lead and and being his buddy in this new approach to onboarding our, our new commissioners. Um, as David said, he would like to get to know all of us better. We'll probably do kind of a divide and conquer uh, reality in terms of our leadership here. Uh, I do want to sit down and have some private conversations with you all. I know David does too, so just kind of stay tuned for more information about that. Um, you saw in my email that I sent out on the, or our email that I sent out on the 2nd of January, that we sort of see ourselves as, as a clearinghouse. That would be a kind of an adjunctive part of our responsibilities to give back to the county. Uh, and so what we're asking each of the commissioners to do is create a list of the history groups that um, exist within their district. Because there's some I know, uh, for, for instance, in, in my old Springfield district, some of you probably don't even know about the Seiden Stricker Schoolhouse group. And it would be good for us to know all of this. Uh, Gretchen Bulova, who I believe is still on the phone. Gretchen, I have a quick question for you. If you could uh, unmute yourself. Um, as part of the 275th, do you know if there still exists a list of all the history groups within the county that seemed like something that was done at that time? It was done, but it is, it, it's not in the kind of shape to pass on. It got handed, long story short, it got handed to somebody else who didn't maintain it in any sort of usable Existed. format. So it's, that's kind of, it's old now and, and, Kind okay. of a dead list to us. I'm I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. So so your recommendation then would be just kind of start from scratch, if I understand yes. correctly. And I will tell you that um, there's a committee on the 250th for Fairfax County um, Commission that is pulling together a list. So I don't. I think if you were to sit tight a little bit, that list will be generated um, okay. in the next month or so. Oh, that would be fantastic. OK, because of cross pollinization, this is why it's so important for us to talk to each other. All right. Wonderful, Gretchen. That's that's fantastic. Well, in knowing that this was um, eminent and really appreciate uh, us giving the heads up on that, Gretchen. Uh, one of the commissioners that I that you all know that is relatively new, but still doesn't know a lot about history in different parts of the county. It occurred to me that Subi would be wonderful to be a point person for this particular project as you know our, our commission works on it uh, she and i've been in dialogue and she is thrilled to be able to do this so we have that to look forward to as well this year so we will be our, our point of contact so next month or before then as you can send uh myself david and and Subi information about the history groups within your district um i did ask you to send on your birth birthday go ahead and do that to me directly uh, if, if you're comfortable with that. Jordan has also agreed to be our official Section 106 person. He kind of has been in the past, but now we're going to formally say Jordan is the guy. Jordan is our Section 106 person. His 
uh, life has slowed down a little bit. Jordan, do you want to take a minute and give us an update as to what has uh, given you a little bit of a uh, smaller bandwidth right now? You're, you're muted, Jordan. Okay, yeah, happy to. So <clears throat> for the, um, I was uh, um, a bit on the advisory council on historic preservation since 2016, <clears throat> appointed by President Obama. Um, and uh, in 2021, I was renewed, uh, 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 was renewed by President Biden. Shortly thereafter, I was made vice chairman. And shortly thereafter, the chairman um, resigned. And for the last year and a half, I have been the acting chairman of the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation. That uh, came to an end about a week ago when Sarah Bronin, who had been nominated in July of 2021, was approved at two o'clock in the morning by a vice uh, a Senate vo vo voice vote, uh, and she became the uh, the permanent chairman, and I continue on as vice chairman. Um, it, this is a <clears throat> an experience that I really uh, savor because I began my work experience back in 1972 as a summer intern at the Advisory Council. And I worked there on the staff for about 10 years. And then life came full circle and I joined the board. And uh, those of you who, who know about the Advisory Council, it's a very, very significant organization. Uh, it, um, it handles the, um, the nexus, any federal nexus with any property owner eligible for the National Register. Uh, uh, has to be com has to be uh, received. The agency has to get the comments of the advisory council. So uh, very busy and uh, very excited now that uh, Sarah has joined our team. She has a um, a law degree, an architectural degree. She's a professor, tenured professor at Cornell University. Uh, she has written lots of um, articles, books on preservation. She teaches preservation. Uh, so it'll be a pleasure to work with her. So. There we go. All right, wonderful. And, and by the way, I'm on the council till 2025 as vice chair. Oh, great, great. Congratulations, Jordan. And thank you. Thank you for your willingness to continue to step forward and, and make good things happen here on, on the commission. Um, you may have noticed on the original agenda I sent out, which was not really in keeping with the protocol we should have followed, I did not use BCCs. I did want you all to see who all the recipients were. Um, I'm going to leave Phyllis, Mary, and Barbara on the recipient list since they're functioning in advisory capacity. Uh, it, I also sent another questionnaire out in the in the middle of January or middle of December, rather, asking for just kind of feedback and thoughts about the commission. Uh, and I won't go into a lot of detail about that tonight because I think some of you still want to get back with me on that. But uh, if there was anything that everybody came forward with, it was the reality that we need to make our meeting shorter. So with that, let me scoot on and I want to uh, go ahead and take a look at the, the minutes for our, um, our December meeting. So uh, Elliot has sent a final copy of those minutes out. Can we have a motion to have those minutes accepted as final? This is Vester. I move that the minutes be accepted as final and the payment be made to Elliot for taking the minutes. I second the motion. Okay. Uh, all in favor then? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion motion passes. All right, so we'll, we'll get you taken care of, Elliot. Sue, um, you are up on the treasurer's report next, and thank you for the wonderful detail that you included in your treasurer's report. I am going to suggest that you just kind of stay with the first half of your page because the second half of the page has a lot to do with the Park Authority and the conference, and we will be having a meeting a little bit later on this month. Let's us kind of digest that there, and then you can just kind of bullet the actual numbers. Does that make sense to you? Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, um, okay. since this is um, sure we have seventy thousand one hundred and eighty three dollars at the beginning of the month at the end. Sixty nine thousand eight hundred and sixty eight. And the history conference was a huge success and we were one thousand two hundred and seventy seven dollars under budget. The five thousand that was allocated for the conference. 
um, and the expenses, uh, the additional expenses that were put in in December should have been paid by now. So uh, the information that I put in there, Lynn, was just to kind of, you know, give people an idea yeah. of what I'm the glad cost you did. was. But yeah, we'll I'm be glad starting you did. new, and Laura is going to be setting up a conference, which hopefully um, uh, you and David and me and perhaps Anne uh, can discuss with uh, the new county liaison and department exactly how we'll do uh, reimbursements for expenses since advocacy will have some I think this year uh, the tax exempt form I'm going to get that renewed and right. updated so we have that for uh, expenses I know it was a bit of a shock to a few people who um, uh, bought some last minute conference things that the tax is not reimbursed we actually will just try to do that a little differently for this year so those couple of yeah. dollars on your purchases get done and that's all I have to say. Thanks for a good conference. Yes, it was a really fantastic conference. And thank you for your help behind the scenes and especially helping with all the the uh, intricacies of managing the uh, the money, Sue. I really appreciate that. Um, I had one other thing for you that I wanted to ask. Well, we like I said, we'll we'll cover the the bulk of that in the in uh, in in committee meeting. I, oh, I know. I wanted to mention that it it did take a while. We'll have to work on the awards distribution, but our award, the Mayo Stunts Award, that went to Mike Salmons was received. I believe it was shortly just before Christmas, and he ended up having a direct deposit with that. So there's there's an opportunity for us to kind of see how we can make that direct deposit reality work. All right, thank yeah. you, Sue. Yes, ma'am. This Who's is this? Esther. I have a question, just a quick yes. question to Sue. Do we absolutely know that the checks have been sent to the vendors, like Jason's? Yes. Thank you. Oh, they have. They, I just they were wanted sent. to make. I wanted to make contact and be assured that we're not in arrears. Thank you. Oh no! And when I went out to the county government center last um, month, we yeah, that should be done. If there's any problem, please let me know, Esther. If you hear it differently, thank you. Thank you. Okay, great, great, good, good questions, good, good answers too. All right, um, so let's move on to staff reports. Amy Wells, you are up, and you're muted. Thank yeah. you. Hi. I, first of all, I always like to think of myself as your archaeologist, but I suppose I can share with Kep. It is nice to have him on board, and um, I'm excited you that are. your offices will be in Fairfax City. That is where I live. I will be happy to let you all know where the best place is to uh, happy hour or uh, grab lunch. Just reach out. The, those are usually the most important things to archaeologists, though. So, yeah. I, yeah, I figured. Um, I'm happy to report that December was relatively quiet for us at the branch. Um, we needed the break to catch up on some of the uh, less exciting admin work that we have to do um, and you would want us to do as county employees, trust me. Um, the biggest project that I, I was a part of that started in December but will go uh, probably years long is a, a new project um, if you're familiar with the county-wide tra county trails plan or the bicycle master plan, uh, the counties combined this into something called Active Fairfax. And it's basically uh, every kind of non-wheeled, well, I guess bicycles are wheeled, non-motorized uh, uh, ways to get through the county. Um, I sent a link with my report, but um, they have sent me, I feel like it was 25,000 trail segments to review. Um, but luckily, with the power of uh, geographic information systems, we're able to run some uh, various uh, scenarios through and and put some trails for, on our absolutely no-go list. Um, it doesn't, any of the work that the Park Authority does to um, suggest perhaps different or better alignments <laughs> To, to these trails um, does not exclude whomever builds it from having to go through the regular review process. So um, I'll be reviewing these 
multiple times, I imagine. Um, but the the first shot at it is a a public review process, but also um, any kind of stakeholder. So the park authority is acting as a stakeholder in this instance. Um, and I think we came up with a 25% absolutely no go rate uh, using our analysis already, and we will be putting that forward. I don't imagine there'll be much pushback on it. Um, I was just grateful that we live in a time when technology made that job <laughs> so much easier. Um, but I'm happy to also discuss that with, with you all. Basically, we took the trail segments and we took um, information about known sites whether they were historic architecture, whether they were historical overlay districts, uh, national register districts, or archaeological sites, and put a buffer around them and said, are they going to come within this buffer, yes or no? And if the answer was yes, we said absolutely no go from our point of view. Um, and then we'll go from there. Of course, um, not all sites are known, and so they'll still have to do review, but this gives them a first pass. Um, and my second thing is just a quick announcement that uh, this Saturday, uh, everybody's third favorite archaeologist, Dr. Elizabeth Kroll, no, <laughs> um, will be speaking at James Lee Community Center. Um, Friends of Fairfax Archaeology is having their annual meeting at 9.30 a.m. at James Lee. Please come by and hear Liz talk about what's been going on the last year here at Fairfax County Archaeology. And I'm happy to take commissioner questions if you have any, otherwise. You can move right along and thank you. Oh, Lynn, now you're muted. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Amy, if you and Kevin somehow can find a reason to connect, I think it would be fantastic. And Kevin, I would be neat if you could go to the, uh, the, the conference is coming Saturday. It sounds like it would be just right, I right up your alley. I think I cleared it with my wife, so I'm good to go there, I think. Okay, no more party. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, no kids sporting events, anything like that. I'm good. So. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, we don't It looks have... like there were a couple of hands raised. Oh, thank you. Oh, Esther's got a question. Go ahead, Esther. No, or is that... thank you. You oh, were muted. Here. That was my reaction to you being muted. Oh, to my being muted. Okay, thank you. All right, so we'll take that down. And and now it sounds like Tom's got a question. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, actually, this is just more of a comment than a question to Amy. Thank you for answering a semi-frivolous question that uh, from a researcher that took up part of your time recently. No worries, and uh, no questions frivolous. If I've got the information, I want to get it to the people who want it. That's how That's how we all get our jobs done, so happy to do it. Well, thank you for your help. You're very welcome. OK. Um, thank you, Tom. So any other hands up? I do not see any. So Chris, if you'd unmute and let us know what's going on in your world. What's going on in the Virginia room? Uh, well, since we last met, we a bunch of things have been digitized. Uh, Herndon News Observer from 1925 to 1946. That newspaper got digitized and it's on Virginia Chronicle. The sole surviving issue of the Fairfax Gazette from 1843, which is owned by the Library of Virginia. That got scanned, that's online. And the Fairfax County Sun Echo, we sent that a couple months ago to get digitized. That is in the queue. So that'll be coming up pretty soon, we hope. <clears throat> also the Fairfax County Board of Supervisor meeting minutes going all the way back to 1924 have been digitized and those are on the Board of Supervisors website. And that is a gold mine of information for historical research if you're doing any, any kind of county research. Um, some things that weren't in the staff report is our beloved Elaine McRae is retiring on February 14th, uh, or is it the 13th? I don't wanna think about it either way. Um, so she is retiring imminently, so if you would like to bid her farewell and convey your respects and thankfulness to all of the years of service she gave to the Virginia Room and the library system, please do so, because she has just been an amazing research librarian and we are going to miss her so much. If your New Year's resolution was to spend more time with Tammy and I this year, we have created an opportunity for you to do that. We are gonna be reading the entire 700 plus page Fairfax County of History 
uh, from January to August, we're going to be having a virtual Zoom book club. It's going to start January 24th, and we'll send more information out when the, when the date gets closer. But uh, that first meeting is just going to kind of be a overview of what we're going to be doing and the timeline. And we'll be meeting bi-weekly, Tuesday evenings. So if you don't have any Tuesday plans, come in and join us. And it'll be about 50 pages or so every two weeks. And we're going to finish it by the end of August. So come out and join us. And that's all I've got for you. We can do it. <laughs> Lynn and Chris, you're both on mute. I've got to stay on top of that. Um, Chris, thank you again. And I still keep hearing good things about your McDonald's presentation. That's kind of exciting. All right, Laura. Hello, commissioners. Happy New Year. I'm excited to be here with all of you, and I'm very excited that we have our two new commissioners with us because that means that Stephanie and I are no longer the newbies. So you guys can take up that mantle for us. And please excuse me if I start drooling. I literally got back from the dentist an hour ago and this side of my face is still numb, but it's coming in and out. So I might just like bite my face and scream, but that's not different than any other presentation I give you guys. So here we go. Um, okay, our we had a very busy December. It was not slow at all at DPD. Um, our uh, modern architectural survey, we have returned our uh, pared down list of uh, significant buildings to uh, DHR, and they have they are in the process right now this week of resubmitting that to the consultants for um, uh, new or new budgets from them. And I'm hoping that that will start in late winter 2023, so like a month from now. Um, the African American Context Study uh, and Architectural Survey. We don't have an update from them. All of our notes are still with that consultant. Um, uh, Denise is still working on uh, picking the Gum Springs consult consultant for their uh, survey. This morning, we had our Centerville uh, kickoff meeting for uh, the entire Centerville, Centerville project, including our architectural component, our architectural survey component of it. Um, and we have a meeting with our GIS, our GIS people to develop our survey one, two, three layer so we can start uh, surveying Centerville, all of the properties built before the year 2000. Um, in very warm early February or mid January. Okay, other items. Uh, so I've been telling you for months about these staff positions, uh, the ARB, ARB Review Board Support Position Planner 2. Uh, we are starting the interviews for that on January 9th, and they're going to run through the 13th, so stay tuned. Um, our African American Markers Program is still marching along. For the six markers are in their second round of comments, and one is uh, in its first draft phase. Uh, the remaining marker is in its research phase, uh, and we plan on having these edits uh, to the chair, Mary, uh, by the end of uh, January, and to the whole committee for the African American Markers Program in February. Um, oh, we're working on, so next week, Stephanie and I are working on finalizing the exhibit that we're going to put into the government center display to go in conjunction with the uh, the supervisor's offices are throwing or co-sponsoring an event on February 7th time TBD, um, which will celebrate all of the 14 finalists who made it through the submission process, including all of uh, the the, uh, the students from grade school to, uh, to high school. And I think some are in college now, but will be coming back and their parents, it's gonna be a whole to do. So I'll be sure to invite y'all once I get more information on that. But I would recommend commissioners go. It's a very significant event and we're very proud of our African-American markers program that, you know, I know it's not necessarily or technically in your purview, but it speaks widely to our markers program and what, what programs you all run. Another big thing we've been working on this month is we're working on narratives for uh, the BRT, which is the bus rapid transit um, and so we are writing up, basically what we're doing is we're writing um, historic markers on steroids. So a little bit longer than the 150, 200 words, um, but uh, uh, FCDOT, Fairfax County Department of Transportation gave us some um, uh, topics that they want us to incorporate. And this is where, you know, I'm meeting with them actually tomorrow. We're going to have um, these, we're using the National Register uh, themes of significance to kind of uh, use as a lens to get through 
what they actually want us because they they gave us this they gave us a list of topics and they were like write history about this and that's a very nuanced thing to do if it's going to be etched in glass for who knows how long so this is going to be a year-long project or at least until fall of 2023 and i promise i will be updating you on that uh the goings house from a couple of megan presented on a couple of months ago if you all remember um so that uh if that's going to the department of uh zoning and appeal on january 25th and we had to do some negotiations you know uh we initially wanted to see if we could find a place to move it what that would cost and you know we met with the supervisor's office but uh time and financial constraints it looks like we we have asked or dpd has asked for a phase two architectural documentation and uh the funding of the wayside marker and the applicant was amenable so that's going on um cemetery mou amy and i talked about this today we we're in the final stretch and we are so close to getting this done so um hopefully we'll have good news for you in the next few weeks and the last thing i have is across my desk this week uh, y'all's National Trust membership is up for renewal for 2023. So I need you guys to vote on and uh, move a, a motion to approve $250 to renew the, the commission's National Trust membership. Did I do it? Okay. Who would like to make a motion? I would. Jordan. I'd like to move that we renew our membership, uh, our National Trust for Historic Preservation membership at a cost of $250. Do I have a second? Yes, I will. Yes, I will second it. All Janae right. Lindner, okay, I'll second it. Great. It was really great. I'm glad I went to it. Thank yeah. you. All in favor? So of the two hundred fifty dollars. Aye. 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 Okay. Any discussion? Oops. I skipped a beat there. Any um, any nays on that? I don't think there are. Looks like Tammy. Do you have a? You have a oh, hand. I, I was going to say I have a different uh, just comment on uh, Laura's report, uh, not regarding the. The motion. Okay, so you wanted me to come back to you. Let me let's let's do that. Okay, so and any opposed to the 250? All right, so motion carries. We'll be able to take care of that, Laura. And Laura, thank you for all the pictures from the holiday party. Oh, sure. That um 100 percent Elliot. That was all Elliot? Oh, yeah, thank you, well, Elliot. Elliot passed them to me. I think they might have come from Subi and from I think maybe Sue took some. Okay, they were wonderful. And there's a fabulous one in there of Phyllis that I really, really like. It's a really nice, nice picture. Okay, and thank you for sending this on ahead of time, your staff report summary. That was really helpful. I did attach it if you all hadn't noticed it was part of the agenda for the for this evening. Okay, I noticed while we were here that we have another guest, Dee Dee Carter. Dee Dee Carter is uh, a, a, a very active uh African-American historian and part of the uh, Fairfax County Cemetery Preservation Association. So, Dee Dee, do you want to just take a second and say hi? She's here as a guest. Hello, everyone. Okay, welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Yes, good to have you here. All right, uh, let's see. Anything else on staff reports? Okay, I don't really have anything. Oh, oh, Tammy, I, I Tammy, Tammy go, ahead. Just... go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to applaud Laura on the amazing um, summary of staff. There's so much going on and it's real. It's just tremendous stuff. Um, and I did want to comment on the um, the bus ra rapid transit narratives. Um, this, you know, uh, it sounds like something that's kind of simple, but this is huge. Um, this is you think about how historic the Mount Vernon district is, and this is um, like a summary of the entire history of the Mount Vernon district because Route 1 just I mean, it's the historic Potomac path. You've got Native American history, um, African American history, colonial history, all of it. And trying to summarize that is, you know, in, in a series of just nine stations is a crazy idea mm -hmm. and um and to have it done on a short timeline is a crazy idea so um so i'll be supporting i know we'll need um sally and ann barnes and and everyone to support that activity and just you know review the narratives and everything and 
Um, and these are the the specific sites were chosen um, by the FCDOT. And so, you know, we need to also look at have we left anything out? You know, yes, we'll have the narratives for those, but uh, this is just vast history. It's liable to be the largest history installation in the county when they're done. So mm -hmm. kind of amazing. So thank you. This is terrific. Nine months. <laughs> Nine <laughs> months. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sure. It, it kind of reminds me of the 19 stations out at the Turning Point Suffragist Memorial, and I know the work that went into creating those, and they 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 did take far longer than than nine months. Uh, also, just as an FYI, Laura, and I'm, I'm sure you probably already know this, but a good subject matter expert on this too, if you wanted to lean into somebody, would be Glenn Fatzinger. Glenn Fatzinger. He sat on the commission for a while, and he's helped put together the Mount Vernon uh, Historic Association. So. Yeah, I mean, we are we are open to any resources you all may have or any, you know. Um, but I, I, I would people. check in with him. He would really appreciate yeah. that. And you'd probably get a, a nice little gold mine of, of info from him. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, Hi. Laura. Lynn? Yes. Anything oh, else? Yes. Yes. Stephanie LinkedIn here. Um, yes. Just wanted to to jump in. We do have a few updates with the Heritage Conservation Branch, if that's uh, if that's all right at this time. Absolutely, go ahead. See, I knew that I some things were going to get left out that shouldn't have been left out, and I apologize for that. No, so no. go ahead, no me. Let's let's hear from you. Um, appreciate it. Also, again, wanted to uh, more formally introduce Jenna Gilbert, uh, who joined the Heritage Conservation Branch over the summer and um, has been working on heritage conservation operations as well as the the resident curator program. Um, she has a, a background in historic preservation, and it's 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 great to have her on our team. Um, December was a, a, a quiet month for us as well. Um, under operations and maintenance, work continues at Drainsville Tavern um, to repair uh, termite damage. So we keep our resident curator program website updated um, with any new updates there um, on on that. Um, for Historic Sites Volunteer Corps, um, there were no uh, events in December, but staff is working on um, outreach for local colleges and high schools for HSBC coming in 2023. Um, and finally, for resident curator program updates, uh, preparations for interior renovation at Elmore Farmhouse are underway. Um, they're just awaiting uh, construction permits. Are there any questions? No, Tammy, your hand is still up. Is that a new one? Okay. Um, and I, I, I want to apologize to Jenna. I should it, somehow. It wasn't until I heard Stephanie's voice that I put two and two together. That Jenna Gilbert is also, and and Jenna, I hope you don't mind me uh, helping to educate our audience here. You are the daughter of Paul Gilbert, who many of you know as the executive director of Nova Parks. So it's good to see that history and preservation is staying within the family. That's fantastic. That is wonderful. So welcome to again, Jenna. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And David, it looks like your hand is up right now. Yeah. Um, I, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Um, there's another BRT project that is on books as well. It's, it's um, not as... Uh, uh, well developed yet uh, from a from a milestone schedule uh, as the route one is but um, the route seven BRT will also um, be a transformative project in the next decade most of you probably many of you have already heard about this but it will uh, route seven is the historic road from Alexandria to Leesburg going back to the 18th century and this BRT is going to connect um, beyond Tyson's down through Falls, the city of Falls Church and um, <clears throat> southeastern Fairfax, or at least eastern Fairfax County um, to Alexandria. So uh, I, I, we, we as a commission need to be mind, just remember that as this moves forward, that we need to do the same kind of um, exhaustive assessment and um, investigations that um, we're doing for the Route 1 project as well. So just as just a heads up for those who may not be aware of the Route 7 BRT. Thank you. Thank you. That's and that's the gift of having us all come together is being able to 
share insights and other information that's helpful helpful for us. All right, uh, so Stephanie, I think we're, we're done. Anything else then? No, nothing. OK, perfect. Wonderful. Good. To Thank you. Time. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, we're going to move on to committee reports then. Um, at least. Budget and inventory. Oh, you thought you were going to be doing old unfinished business. Oh, oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here I am. I'm, I'm further down on the agenda than I need to be. You can see I'm really trying to be a, a strong taskmaster tonight. Thank you for calling me out on that, Elise. Yes, let us please talk about the um, Section 106, uh, I-495 project that we did discuss last month, which was pretty significant. Uh, Cheryl's going to put a voice to that, and then we're going to segue from that into discussing the Dunloring School situation. All right, so Cheryl, you're up. Um, so we uh, submitted a request to be a, um, a participating, you know, uh, consulting Consulting's party. Heard. Thank you. <laughs> on, uh, on, on that Section 106 project, and uh, we have been accepted as such. So we did receive a reply that letter got sent. Um, I, what I was just looking at was that there was another Section 106 process, which has got to, to do with the flood study. Um, that letter actually never did get sent. I was waiting on a response back and it just sort of slipped. So uh, I'll see if we can circle around, but it wasn't a critical uh, communication issue. So, um, so we're on track. Okay. Um, Amy, I recall that you were interested in making sure you were a consulting party on that as well last month. Has that worked out for you? Yes, it was. It, we got it all sorted out. Thank you, though. Okay, that, that was the one that slipped between the cracks. Sorry, Amy. No worries. Okay. All right. So, anything else on that, Cheryl? On Cheryl? Is that it? Okay, Cheryl, do you want to segue then on into um, the Dunloring piece? And Sue Kovac Schumann will uh, likely help out here as well as Tammy. And then maybe at the end, oh my goodness, look who's here. Oh, this is fantastic. Look who just joined us. Jeff Clark is here. Wow. Wow. Welcome, Jeff. So we're, we've got some of the most current, newest information here about the Dunloring School Project. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of now tossed around a little bit. Uh, do you all want to go first and then check in with Jeff? Do you want to do that in reverse? What would you all like to do on this? Tammy, Cheryl, anybody? Uh, Sue, do you have any further information to any updates for us on that? Well, I, I had told Lynn today that Carl Frisch was going to set up a meeting um, with history commission people and the facilities people in schools. And uh, that was that was on December 19th that Carl and I actually spoke face to face. We don't have anything right now because he's telling me it really isn't a demolition, but I'm getting other information from other people. Uh, and I did attend the meetings. So as did Elise for the one where we found out a repurposing was a demolition. So. It, it was either a decision that was made that hasn't been made public yet, and um, we're not sure why. Um, but uh, you know, Jeff is the expert and has done some of the history on this. So um, I, I preferred to just kind of wait until I could once again meet with Carl and remind him that we want to speak to him. That this was a big process getting this on the inventory, and you just can't decide in a vacuum to take it off. There's my two cents. <laughs> OK, all right, Tammy, you want to add to that? Then I think we need to hear from Jeff. I did speak to Jeff um, this evening, so he's gone. Yeah, I, I will just I will just add that I've reached out to the um, Mount Vernon school board member, um, Karen Corbett Sanders and CC um, Supervisor Stork on that. Um, she did get back to me this morning, early this morning, um, and had sort of referred me over to um, you know, to a different school board member. So, um, so I haven't heard back from them. So it, it, it didn't sound like everybody 
was clear on exactly what was happening. I'm glad that we're asking questions. I think that's important um, to show our concern, and um, and so they know that we're looking at it. They know that it. They knew that it was on our agenda for this evening, and I don't know whether we want to invite um, someone, you know, from the school board to come to our next meeting. Um, but anyway, so um, so I would love to hear from Jeff. Jeff is the expert on Fairfax County Public Schools history, so um, so I would defer to him. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Tammy. And for those of you that don't know, Jeff won a Distinguished Service Award a couple of years ago. He was given one from the Fairfax County History Commission for the tremendous work he has done in terms of chronicling, chronicling and preserving and researching and writing about the school system's history. Jeff, do you mind stepping in here for a minute, please? Good evening, everyone. OK, so I'm going to preface this by saying I'm not allowed to officially speak on behalf of FCPS tonight because <laughs> I just oh, decided to okay. say um, but I But I can tell you what I know because I'm part of the communications office and we are part of the group that's tasked with informing the community about projects in the Capital Improvement Program. The Dunloring Elementary School project is one of them. At the point we're at right now in that project is uh, community meetings are being done around the design of the building. They have settled on two potential designs, I think, at this point, and now they're getting community feedback on those designs. Um, the project has not gone on for bidding or anything like that. It's not it's not that far along. It's still in the planning phase. Um, yeah, that's that's basically where it is right now. So can I just and ask Jeff, the, so the designs that are being offered, um, do any of the designs, are any of the designs being offered uh, promote reuse or do they both involve demolition? The two designs that I have seen are both demolition because of the age of the building and it's it's considered unsuitable for a modern elementary school and they need to what they're looking at is considering a three-story or a four-story building that would go on that site and based on the topography they're either going to build it at one end of the property or the other in either case it would mean the from what i'm understanding and from everything i've seen the total demolition of the existing building hmm. interesting you um, know, I, I, and yeah, it is interesting, Tammy. Let me jump in here for just a second. Um, the history of this school is significant, folks. It's very significant. And I had a hunch as this conversation unfolded last month that it hit upon an era in our county's history that was troublesome. And uh, uh, the email I sent out this evening has a link in it back to the Fairfax County Public Schools history page that, that Jeff is um, so instrumental in writing about and maintaining. I highly recommend you go and read the article that is part of that link as part of that article at the end is a short video that talks about the history of the school. Uh, it was um, basically built in the 1930s and uh, from land that a former slave uh, uh, sold to, to have a school built on it. The community involvement in getting the school off the ground is so heartwarming. And some way, somehow, with a marker or some kind of notification, uh, I, I, I really hope there's a way that we can be part of a solution here in honoring this school's past, what its predecessors have done, and the gift it has been to the future. I'm a little perplexed because at the beginning of 2021, the school was slated to be open again as an elementary school. So I'm not quite sure what, what transpired there. Um, that, that is correct. It was a surprise. Yeah, yeah. So I'm... I. Um, Please, please read the article. I'm going to leave this on the agenda again for discussion for next month, and maybe we'll have a little bit more information then. It may uh, be called upon us to then to, to write notes to our uh, respective school district representatives. 
Right. I, I think uh, I think asking questions of our school board members and and um, supervisors is, you know, is completely a uh, normal activity for us to just seek out more information. Hopefully more will be forthcoming on exactly what's going on, you know, um, to get a straight answer on what's going on. Is it. I have a question. Is that Anne? Yeah. yeah. Um, is it. I think what I'm hearing you guys say is it may be premature for us to write a letter, but I'd love for them to get a letter say that, you know, formally saying that we're we're, we're very much watch, watching this and really concerned and would like them to consider adaptive reuse. Just to, you know, we could do it as soon as now to, to write that you know, we don't have to say much because we don't know it all, but we have just heard from uh, Jeff that that basically preserving anything's off the table, and that's not what we want. I don't know that we have a say in it, but we certainly have an opinion. Right. And, you know, Anne, when you were chair a few years ago, you wrote a beautiful letter uh, about Collinwood. Did I get that correct? Yeah, I probably didn't write it. Probably Tammy wrote it. OK, so it was actually before my time. I think um, I think Sally Lyons might have been instrumental in writing um, that letter, but I have a copy of it and I had shared it with Lynn because I thought, is this the is this the kind of thing that we want to send to the Board of Supervisors or the school board, um, you know, just both. performing our mission? Take a page out of Jordan's book and CC everyone in the world. You know, <laughs> I mean, it works. It really gets people's attention. Yeah. So this so. It, it's a it's a I mean we could we could decide um the kind of thing we 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 do we can say we you know hand it to a small committee and vote tonight that we authorize them to write a letter um uh, to the school board and to the board of supervisors or if you think it's better we can hold off till we're even more informed, but every time you wait another month, maybe they're more on a on a path that they can't change. Maybe they're on that path already, but we don't know. Right, right. All right, beyond you, and we've got a couple of other hands up. Anything else, and from that, thank you. I, I I think your your points are extremely well taken, and I I'm I'm liking the timing of our talking about this right now. Um. OK, anything else, Ann? No, I'm good. You're good. OK, uh, Jordan, your hand's been yeah. up also. So as the resident 106 expert, <clears throat> one, I'd, I'd have to ask the question, are there any, the first question I have is, are there any federal, is there any federal uh, involvement at all, DOE, um, CORE, CDBG, anything at all uh, that might trigger the 106 process? And Jeff, would you know that? I would not know that someone in our facilities office would. OK, so it might be useful to look at that. I don't know enough about school construction to know if there would be some Department of Education dollars involved or if there are some some local community development block grant funds involved. The second recommendation I would have, and I, I, I don't know whether I haven't read up on this property. I don't know if it would be eligible for the National Register, but I presume it would be at least on a local basis. Um, is this something we'd want to let Preservation Virginia know about and see if it might qualify? We've done this before with Association Drive, qualify for their most endangered list. Oh, Ooh, that's interesting. It's a handsome building. It's a very handsome building. In fact, it's a similar architecture style as the old <clears throat> Burke School uh, in, in, in Burke. OK, we've got a couple of other hands up here, too. Jordan, anything else on that? You've asked some That's good it. questions. That's okay. it. That's it. OK, David. Um, oh, well, it's following up on your comment, Lynn. Uh, there were, um, as as there was in 1959-60, when uh, all of the middle schools were constructed at the same time and opened on the same day using the same architectural design and footprint. Um, there was an earlier uh, 
an effort by the county schools to build several school structures. And you are absolutely correct. The, the Burke School is almost a mirror image of the Dunloring School. Um, uh, just as a footnote, my um, much older sister attended first grade at Dunloring School in 1952 when mm. the building when the building was uh, 14 years old. Um, it, the building has been added on to several times, and yes, the, the 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 use of the square footage in that existing original portion is is probably not conducive to current pedagogical programs by the county school system. Having said that, um, in the hands of a of a gifted architect and adaptive reuse could could be done could be done in, in a fairly I think exciting way. Uh, and, and I think if if I I'm trying I'm trying to just rack my brain here, I think that that the Dunloring School and the Burke School are the only two surviving structures uh, of that era of that design. And it is an interesting it is an interesting design. Fairview Elementary School was built at the same time, but that uh, one's kind of been entombed. Yeah. The building has been added on so many times. Yeah, the original right. four are there. That is that is that is correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's all I had to say. All right. Thank you, David. Anybody else have a comment on this? I really appreciate the rich discussion and exchange of ideas here. <clears throat> oh, Elise, I'm hey, sorry. They could. Uh... Okay, I'll, I'll a, a, go ahead, Elise. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, Lisa's hand was up. All right, somebody else was talking. Um, I've been following this one for a long time, and I'm sorry my stupid light went out again. Um, my my best friend from high school's mother taught there. Um, so anyway, I, I attended the first 20 minutes or so of the meeting because I had ARB that night, so I sat in as long as I could. And the impression that I got was that, to, to David's point, is they really don't feel that the placement of the current building is conducive to to school use and to track traffic nearby traffic use. At, it, it, bus 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 access, person access, turning in, turning out, traffic on Idlewood and um, Gallows Road, and I kind of got the impression that this, really the school building is a lost cause. Because I just can't see that they could build I, it just from what I saw of the plans, it just didn't look like it would work. Now maybe mm -hmm. somebody else can take a look, but I think only Sue and I have actually seen them at this point. Mm -hmm. So somebody should look at the plans. The other thing is, you know, we definitely don't want to be we need to be talking to the school board because the board of supervisors has no say in this. Right. It's completely up to the school board. And we would be communicating with them. So we have to figure out what our goals are specifically. Whether we're at adapt, whether adaptive reuse is a practical thing to ask for. And who exactly we're talking to. So anyway, that's my comment. OK, well, collectively, then let me ask. I'm sorry, David, go ahead. You're muted. David, you're muted. The battery in my mouse got uh, turned okay. off. Okay. Um, at least that was a good comment. And um, technically, in Virginia, school boards in cities and counties are the legal owners of the land and the structures. So she's absolutely correct that um, this is not a, count, a, a board of supervisors um, action only. It is only to the point of if there, if there was a bond, a financing associated with it. And I think at least it's probably correct that the that the school that the structure is probably a lost cause. And in addition to all the things she pointed out, one of the overriding concerns now in new school construction is setbacks and security um, designs. And now most of the new the new schools will and I don't want to get too much into this have will will have large vestibule areas where people come in they get screened they come into an area but they can't go any further and there's a second round of screening this is for parents for anyone going into these new structures and it requires setbacks from the street and it requires 
designs. And so security systems and, and, and structures are um, really driving a lot of school design in the 21st century, as we can all understand why. So, um, but um, at least you had some very good comments. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, David. And um, Tom's hand is up too. And then I've, I've got a thought here to circle back to, uh, to Anne. Tom, go ahead. I just wanted to say briefly, I've only seen architects renderings and news reports of this, but it seems quite clear that it would involve the complete demolition of the school building. There's that much seems obvious unless I'm totally misinterpreting what their uh, what the renderings show. OK, anybody else? We've got another Sue here who's. Yes, I just wanted to say that there were actually three plans, but the first one was considered not viable and that's a really busy intersection. There has been a lot of development in that area around it. So part of the discussion and was how can we make this safe? It's never been really safe. So putting it back from an administrative use to uh, a public school da daily use um, was part of the problem. And I want to say you can demolish it, but you can still put something there in its place or a marker, some kind of little museum or some kind of memorable thing. And maybe that's something we can explore after we find out more about this. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah, that's why I was going to come back with Anne, because it 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 it, it feels like and it seems like to me some kind of advocacy and marker. Um, combination here to at least honor the heritage of this building, which was such a beautiful example of, as, as I've said before, community involvement and a real intentionality about having children safely and clearly educated at, at, at that time. Um, and might this be something to put on your advocacy uh, agenda? I know you're going to be calling for some yeah. dates. Yeah, we could do that. Um, okay. And and then this would, if we don't take any, make any decision to do anything other than talk about it, then we'll use this month to learn more and um, and and we'll make some recommendations. It you know you just hate to hear the word lost cause with respect to preservation. This is really a depressing conversation, but it may be that the uh, the the larger issues of this world are just not going to support preservation. But you know, if it doesn't, let's be a lot more interesting than just a marker. Let's do, you know, we can make, we can suggest all sorts of interesting things and work with Jeff and maybe do, you know, a really excellent website or I don't know, virtual tours, three-dimensional tours of the building before it's lost, all sorts of things that okay. can, can mitigate, make us feel not quite so sad and pathetic yeah okay all right that's, we'll, put that's that on the, we'll put that on the agenda yes. perfect outstanding tammy is your hand still up or is this new i yeah. was just gonna make a further comment um you know we've talked about that adaptive reuse may not be possible you know at this location and you know one of the questions that i also would have is um is this location um the absolute only you know, play, is it the appropriate place for this school? You know, I mean, I think that's another question as as well as the is. You know, I, I don't really know much about it, but, you know, does the school have to go in this location? Is there another option? Um, so anyway, just, you know, more questions that we might have. So we might raise these in. Um, you know, in a letter if we have that, but I, but I like all of the different ideas of, you know, how could we um, if you can't reuse, how do you represent the school, um, you know, in a historic way? So, but anyway, I think uh, I think showing concern about it is important. And I think advocacy is a good place to continue discussing and finding out more information. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I just okay. Cheryl's, to, Cheryl's I just wanted to say then that, um, you know, you start with asking for what you want and then you make the compromises later on. Um, so, you know, let's, you know, we, we may, you know, may have, you know, some, you know, difficult hurdles here, but I think what Tammy just said, you know, is, is, 
you know, are salient points. Because I don't know that this began as a new school project, Sue. Wasn't it going to be something else? I mean, they were just talking about, there were a variety of possible uses initially before it, you know, before it kind of coalesced around, you know, developing a new school. I, or am I just not remembering it correctly? I don't think it was anything other than the school. And, you know, I'm not sure there is another place in that area for a school. I really, I'm, I mean, yeah, you're, you're shaking your head too, Elise. I know that area really well. I know how it's being developed. There are little plots of one or two acres still for sale that are being developed and putting, you know, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, I don't know, huge houses up. I don't see there's another place. This makes sense in a lot of ways because the land is already owned by the school board. Mm -hmm. Um, that's pretty much true. Um, the McLean Civic Association opposes the school. There's there's a need for elementary an elementary school in the greater Dunloring, McLean, Vienna area. And I think we've used on this as an easy option. Now maybe there's a site closer to McLean. Um, look, look look to see the McLean Civic Association's opposition is is a matter of record. So somebody could look and see what they were saying. I didn't really pay much attention to it. But it's basically, oh, we've got this building that used to be a school. Let's repurpose it back to a school. And that, that was the scheme. And then it degenerated. Yeah. And, and I have to say, I'm sorry, my hand's not raised, but I've been in that school many times just for Fairfax Federation of Citizens Association meetings. It didn't ever seem that bad to me. But then I guess I like old buildings and things that are <laughs> kind of rickety and not new. Yeah, and, and you know, at the end of the day, as we've said, it is school board property. I do know before it became, they, they wanted to declare it an elementary school again in 2021. It had been administrative uh, building. And I know the school board, I, I, I lived through the, the drama and the trauma of the close of Clifton Elementary School. And it is now on an incredibly beautiful piece of property in Clifton. It must be worth a fortune. Uh, and the school sits empty to this nice. day. So then I, I that that was closed. Good heavens! Now probably seven years ago. So um, anyway, so I think we've heard from some good folks here. Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time to join us tonight, especially with just kind of short notice. Um, Cheryl, Tammy, Elise, David, uh, Jordan, uh, a lot of you had some had some good good thoughts on this. And if you haven't had a chance to read the article and watch the video that I, I posted on the agenda, please or the agenda email. Please, please go ahead and do that. And I'll leave this on the um, agenda for next month then. Okay. Uh, I don't really have anything else for new business unless somebody wants to correct me on that. If not, well, now, Elise, this is your moment to talk about budget. <laughs> okay. Um, I had surgery in the middle of December and I overestimated how fast I would recover from it. Oh. Um, but I haven't had any solid food since December 15th. Oh no. No, I'm fine. I've, I've pr progressed to soft food now. So I'm going to get the budget request finished and off to Lynn and Cheryl to look at to send off. So that's how was the budget request. In terms of financial data, I haven't done that either. Um, I just didn't realize how, how tired I'd be. So that's my budget report. The inventory committee, um, just as a note, Dunloring School, the, rec the nomination was prepared by one of Laura's predecessors, Lori Tukowski, and it's our example on the website for how to do an inventory nomination for a single site. We may want to be thinking about maybe we're going to have to change that in the future. I think we need to have an inventory committee meeting in the near future because we have some issues to deal with and I will be contacting the committee to get get on, get that on the schedule. Thank okay. you. All right, thank you, Elise. And please feel better. Um, I can completely empathize with surgery that ends up with not being able to eat much. I have lived through that and it's good to see you here tonight. Thank you for taking the energy and the time to speak up as much as you have. Okay, well, thank you. And I think the surgery will solve some of my other problems. So I'm just looking forward to when I could actually eat food again. Oh, well, good. We we would look forward to that, too, for you. All right. Just a little bit of peanut butter, right? <laughs> All right. Hang in there, Elise. 
Um, okay, history conference. I'm not going to say too much about it, other than you've already heard some 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 nice commentary. Uh, the committee will be meeting on the 24th. Laura will be coordinating a virtual meeting for that. We will discuss and dissect some of the wonderful pieces of information that uh, Sue put together for us. So we have a better understanding in the year to come how we will be managing our finances. Um, you all do know, and I'll just state again, that we have uh, Tom Jelton down as our keynote. I have uh, emails into Kave, who is the gentleman that we secure the space at Sherwood Community Center from, and I have not yet heard from him. I've asked for the 4th or the 11th of November in keeping with some of our past practices. That's really all I have for history conference in the moment. Uh, and awards, I mentioned a little bit earlier that Mike Sammons did in fact get his uh, his monies and uh, kind of a segue into uh, something that Mary Lipsy and Phyllis and Barbara were working on together. The, the young folks from uh, George Mason University that helped put the AAHI project together, uh, I know remain very um, happy and thrilled with the uh, their presence at the history conference and uh, we continue to be very grateful to them. So I'm looking forward to some updates from Mary in the not too distant future about how that AAHI is running and who a point of contact might be on the our commission to make sure that we stay on top of that since it, it it's, this was was with us. All right, uh, Gretchen, semi, semi quincentennial. Sorry, the cat is sitting on my notes, so I will uh, do this very quickly. Um, the committee, the Fairfax County Committee is, um, uh, committees itself are forming with chairs, and so those are starting to meet. And then the state, here it is, uh, the state 250th Commission um, has switched to quarterly meetings. Um, and so the next meeting is actually this Friday. So I'll have a little bit more to share um, at the next commission meeting. Okay. That's all. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Anne. Oh. Advocacy um, and annual report. Yes. Uh, so we'll have a meeting on advocacy uh, this month. If uh, either of you new members would like to join us, please do. We'll let, we'll, we'll go ahead and send out uh, whenever we settle on a, to a Thursday night, we'll send it out to everybody. Um, then we'll be getting the annual report go going. So know that if you're in charge of a committee, uh, we need, Subi and Tammy will be asking for this, but just if you're, if you're in charge, if you did anything in 2022, we need to know about it. And so try to give us, even if it's just bullet points, we can pull it together of the highlights of what your committee did. And then same with biographies. Um, if you had some changes in 2022, we'll want updates just really on everything like we usually do. OK, so that's all for and, me. Yeah. And uh, did, did we ever get to finalize? Remember there was some an Anna report or maybe two that was still outstanding. Is there anything we could help you in that regard? Yeah, we're going to I'll I'll get together with Elise on that because we talked okay. about okay. at last meeting or the meeting before. You're right. We there's we just accomplished 2021, so I think we're we're behind on 19 and 20. OK. All right, well, I'll, we'll we'll keep that on the table then. Let's let Elise get better. All right, um, Cheryl, now you have some good updates for us on the marker committee. We've all, I've been sitting on pins and needles for the last few weeks, wondering exactly how this was gonna play out and you are our savior. So talk to us a little bit about what's going on with markers, yes. Okay, you're muted. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, yeah, so I will, um, uh, I've agreed to step up and, and be the chairperson for the marker committee. Um, and yeah, um, yeah, so yeah, I'm look, actually looking forward to it. I, I was, um, when I was recruited to the commission, I was very specifically recruited to that committee. Um, and uh, and so I'm happy to, to continue to serve 
I will you know, rely on people like Carol to help guide me. And Mary has already offered to sit down and have a meeting with me. And we will uh, proceed. I haven't responded, but we'll schedule that and get that moving. We do have a, um, a, a marker that's already un, that is under review. We met in December. And so we need to uh, have a meeting again to uh, you know, reach out to the gentleman and see where he, he is at and see whether or not we need a meeting. Um, this month or not. So, um, is that Mr. Roby? Is that Mr. Roby? This, yeah, this is the um, the marker about uh, Merrifield. Okay, that's right. Which was a really productive, interesting meeting that we had with him in December. That was uh, very, very, very positive. Um, so we'll see. We'll reach out and get see if we can get that done. We also have another meeting uh, marker in the works that, or at least, has been proposed, which has got to do with. Um, Mount Vernon, uh, Fort Hunt High School, uh, which is now Carl Sandburg uh, Middle School. Uh, the Alumni Association wants a, um, a marker for that. Tammy and I were kicking back and forth, some, you know, what kind of angle uh, might be um, most historical for that, uh, that we could you know, sort of work on and ask the alumni to develop. Um, Cheryl, is that the Sandburg? Um, that is near the street named Sandberg after Carl Sandberg, who was there during World War One. Yeah, that's the Fort Hunt High School. No, it's it's old Fort Hunt High School off of Fort Hunt Road. Um, I okay. don't think there's a Sandberg Road nearby. Okay, All right, because I know there's one someplace in the county. I didn't know if it was that one. I wasn't sure when I learned that exactly where it was. Okay. Yeah, I think we just. I think middle schools are just named after poets. High School. What's that, Carol? Carol's. They're going to do with Murrayfield. Who are they working with to put a marker down for Murrayfield? Who's, who's talking right now? Is that Dee Dee? Oh. Don't know. Don't know who that is. Um, okay. Is, is that it for markers then? And, and Cheryl, tell us who you have on your list for marker committee yes. members, because I, I wanted to clarify that. Yes. Uh, so um, we had eight members and we lost three. Um, so uh, the the members currently are myself, um, Ann Barnes, uh, Carol Herrick, Esther McCullough, and Elise Murray. Um, so oh, and Tammy, you must be on there. Yes. Oh, but so I was I, looking that at was a my 2021 list, and that was the most recent yeah. I could find. So yeah, it, that was my first meeting in December. Uh, so, so there were six of us then, um, and we lost, you know, we don't have uh, participating actively, but of course they are participating as advisory um, members, uh, Barbara Peters, Mary Lipsy, and Phyllis Walker Ford. So yes, if anybody uh, would like to join the marker committee, just uh, email me. I'd be happy to you know, include you on our, uh, our emails and scheduling a date. Well, and I'm speaking out of turn here, but um, but this might be an appropriate time to um, to request Laura to send out kind of the annual summary of um, of commissioners and what um, committees they're signed up for. And, you know, I'm not sure I exactly remember how like isn't each commissioner supposed to sign up for two committees or. No, there's no requirement. Oh, I made that up in my head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's so. a great idea, though. Yes, there you go. It's a good one. And I, as actually, when I came on, I think I was told that Tammy. So that was a very long time ago. Yeah. Oh, it's legend. Um, but anyway, yes, that I think legend. it would be great, especially with the loss of of, you know, three active commissioners. It would be good to make sure that we have um good staffing of each of our committees. I think that would be great. I agree. And and thank you for asking about the list because that was something I was going to ask about. I, and I'm not sure who does that. I, is it, Laura? Is that you? Or Cheryl, who who does that list? Denise, Denise did it. Oh, Denise did it. So Laura, that's that's you. Okay, okay. Your mouth is coming back. <laughs> your mouth is your smile is coming back. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I okay. can handle that. No problem. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we may have missed a year. Um, you know, Denise may have had like several jobs that she was doing at once. No, she was, did. She did one on January fifth, twenty twenty two. Really? I did not. I couldn't find that one. I only have the May of 2021. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got it. I'm looking at it. 
Okay. So I have awesome. One day to beat Denise. Got it. Good. Okay. <laughs> good, good, good. You could just be on time. You'll just yeah. You know, <laughs> right. Beat, yeah. Match her. There you go. Okay. Cemetery preservation. Uh, which wait, was on Lynn. This is I'm Carol. Sorry. Can I say something? Absolutely. Absolutely. I just want to say that we keep talking of Phyllis and um, and and Barbara and Anne, but we we're forgetting Barbara Peters. You know, and I, I feel badly that we keep doing three and we're eliminating Barbara and Barbara was our treasure for a long time. So right. I just want to put in there that we did have four that we've lost. Yes, we've lost four. So You're sorry right. about that. Yeah, no, no we lost I'm, three I'm from happy. our committee. What I'm happy you, you brought it up. The, the The problem is the three of them were so active on such intense committees that for unfortunately for a while, they will probably be re referenced as the three. Um, well, and, no, no, I hear you. But Barbara was involved with a marker absolutely. and she was the treasure. And uh, yes. I'm, I'm not arguing. I hear what you're saying. It's just we don't want to leave her out is what I'm getting at. That's fine. And let's make sure Good to get point. that in the minutes. Let's Good make point. sure to get that in the minutes. Thank you, Carol. OK. Um, cemetery preservation. I talked to Mary about this today. She is waiting on a letter and wants to get with her committee. And she believes that will happen before next month. So when we roll around to our February meeting, there will be something more substantive on our agenda than it is right now. Tammy, was your hand up? Did you have a comment about that? No? OK. All right, ethnic and oral history, Esther. Hello, everybody, yeah, and Happy New Year. I happy am year. excited to continue the ethnic and oral history project that we have going. Our new members might not be aware of it yet, but we'll, we'll speak so I can tell you all about it. The committee is working on interviewing citizens of the county. We've interviewed some leaders in the county, some former board of supervisors uh, and, and chairs, and also we'll, we'll do a librarian and a former history commission meet, member. And the project is to let folks say how history has affected them and what they perceive so that they feel closer to history and not think of it as in an old dusty book on the shelf. So we want to perpetuate the idea that history is alive and you're making history every moment, every day. So our committee will start out this year by meeting on January the 17th, two o'clock on team. Now it was suggested that we do the time element that was once held by the AAHI committee, which was a Tuesday at 2.30. So I'm saying two o'clock. Now, if there are objections, let me know personally, email me personally so I can make changes. But I'm going to request that after I get off this meeting. Otherwise, we have no action from Channel 16. We will contact and see what their schedules are all about because our person, our representative retired and we will have Olby, Lynn, I think you remember her. She is going to come into the position that is filming, the, that's bringing the filming crew to Channel oh, 16 for us. Is this Olby? Olby yes. is going to be taking Pam's place, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm she, uh, she helped uh, with the conference. contact her because I know she's in the transition right now and trying to learn her job. So no news on that. OK, wonderful. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. And I, I want to loud Esther for what her uh, committee has has been doing over the last year and a half or so. We've had some wonderful people do uh, oral histories. Uh, we've gotten Jerry Conley. We've gotten Kate Hanley. 
Uh, I know some of you have uh, done some of the interviewing, and so we're looking yet to do Suzanne Levy, and we're looking yet to also do uh, Naomi Zevin, who has a yes. wealth of knowledge around her area of the county, uh, especially around the, the Lake Barcroft area. And unfortunately, and I think many of you have probably heard this, uh, Thurgood Marshall's wife, uh, I think her, her nickname was Cece, uh, did pass this last month. So um, she was a very strong, strong presence uh, in, in that particular community. All right. Um, anything else on ethnic? All right. Uh, Bob Beach, RCP. Yeah, I, I'm on the um, resident curator program. I don't have anything to add over above the great presentation we were given earlier this evening. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Bob. Um, Bob, there's a lady that is now running the Turner Farm, the retreat center over there. You know mm -hmm. her name off the. Are you know her name off the top of your head? No, I do not. Um, I think, I think but I should. It's, it's I'm embarrassed. Sarah. Yeah, sorry. Sarah. Anyway, she's the one that had the pancake breakfast back in uh, December that I attended and, and got mm -hmm. to see a, a tour of, of the location. And I think, and, and let me just put this in your in your hat and 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 think about it. She would be a wonderful little speaker to have at the beginning of one of our meetings to talk us through what her experience has been. So just cogitate on that and. Maybe we can circle back sure. about that. Okay. Sounds All right. Good. Ann Thanks. Barnes, you're, you're welcome. Ann, Ann Barnes, bylaws? You're muted, Ann. Ann, you're muted. Muted. There we I'm go. Muted. You got me? Okay. I, I hear you now. Okay. Um, I'm going to... I'm planning to have a meeting in March, March the 7th. And I will send out notices about that to my committee members. It's been a while now. And um, you mentioned um, in conversation with, um, I think Cheryl, um, you brought that up about um, listing the membership um, list of committee members that, that Committee members have. I would like to to get that because um, I'm, you know, some people have, have retired and all that. I would like to just get my list of my members. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for, for having having said that, Anne, uh, mm -hmm. do you mind if I jump in here and ask a question then? Sure. Um, if if y'all. Would it, and this is a perfect time to do this. We're the new year, it's new time, new opportunities. Please take a look at the different committees that we offer. Our website is a nice overview of that. And if there is one you would like to jump on or jump off of or, or, or whatever, this would be a great time to do that. So it sounds like Laura is going to be the one who's going to put that master list together of our contact information, our uh, titles, and... Um, or emails and all of that, and then also what what uh, committees we serve on. So if you all can make a commitment to within the next couple of weeks, just get to Laura, the committees you'd like to stay on or join, name, address, and I think she also has included on there when your commission term is up. Mm -hmm. I think that's also on the list. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Is, is that doable for you all? I mean, that really would just be one little short mini email. I think it's doable. Okay, perfect. And then you would get your the list that you're asking for, Anna. And I think, quite frankly, you're, since you're the second person who's asked about that tonight, that's obviously something worth paying attention to. Okay. okay. Any Anything else, Anne? No, that's it. Okay, because we did get back, just I'll, I'll reiterate from last month, um, a, a, a response from the county attorney's office on our bylaws changes. And that's how we now know we can have advisory people. And they have kind of left the awards section on that alone. So it appears that we'll be able to go forward and do awards as we have in the past. Okay, okay. Um, Elise, anything from A or B? I Can I just clarify something there? Uh, so it, it requires the, the, the attorney's office is asking us to make an amendment to our bylaws in order to, so that we can continue with 
awards. Um, so we do have to uh, have, a, you know, and correct that we do need to have a meeting so that the bylaws can be uh, shared with the, the recommendation can be shared with the rest of the commission according to our process because we do have to change the bylaws. OK, so that's something you all will be discussing on the 7th of March then, right? Yes. OK, and Thank we will you. obviously meeting be, be meeting again before then. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, thank you for sh Cheryl. Thanks for jumping in there. Uh, Elise, anything from ARB now? Um, I got my inventory report finished at six o'clock and Laura put it on the share file if you want to read it. Things yeah, have been I've fairly routine. Yeah. However, there's one thing that's exciting. A a daycare, a child care education center is coming into two of the penitentiary cell block buildings. Oh, cool. oh you're kidding. This is exciting. And we've, we've, it's, it's, the, the, their application has been approved. If you're standing at the back of the penitentiary where the Stanley Port used to be, it's the last two buildings on the left, the two that are closest to the reformatory. Okay. Um, so anyway, they're going to be a daycare center, and we're all really excited by that change because we think it's just such a fitting use. I think it's wonderful. We don't often talk about children and little ones very, very often in our meetings. And so it's nice that one will have an excuse to and two will be kind of part of watching all that grow. That's that's great. Thanks, Elise. All right. Um, and thank you for 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 what you shared in the in, in the share file. OK, um, David, anything you began the meeting with a wonderful overview of some of the hot accomplishments in Fairfax City. Do you have anything else you'd like to add in here? Well, there was one item I did not mentioned because it's directly related to history and that is the city council completed a two-year effort to um, make final changes to the city's nomenclature regarding the civil war and uh, this this vote occurred in october at the end of october uh, the city has changed the names of 15 streets one school changed our city seal, our city insignia, our city flag. Um, we removed um, one monument, which was put by the UDC in 1927, which was first blood shed by a Confederate. And then um, we also took down a marker that said the birthplace of the Confederate battle flag. We are going to um, put up a new marker at the city cemetery, because the city cemetery was, or portion of it, was the site of the first African American school yes. um, after the Civil War, and that was a Julius Rosenwald school, wasn't it? No, that was this is nope. this was this was this is before that. This is really in the 1870s and 80s. Oh wow, wonderful! And, um, all of these changes became effective on January 1, 2023. Do the wave. Um, secondly, uh, just an update on Old Town Hall, one of four structures in the city with a national uh, uh, trust reservation um, designation. Um, it, the, the, the work is being done in two phases. Phase one, $700,000. It is um, near if you go the the new the new posts have been installed the new deck is being built and um we anticipate completion of phase one in early 2023 probably within the next 120 days we're 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 removing and relocating utilities fire hydrants we're going to have all ada accessible it's going to be quite nice um i was nervous in the beginning but uh and i insisted that we get the best minds that we could before we do anything. I said, you know, the, the rule number one is do no harm. So John Mott and Doug Gilpin, who are well-known uh, architectural uh, historians in Virginia, came together with the city and uh, the architects and the contractors to move forward. Phase two of this project will begin later in 2023. It is a $2.1 million project to actually go in and replace the mechanical systems in the building itself. This is electrical, HVAC, elevators, restrooms. 
So it's going to be done um, later in the year. So that's a very exciting uh, two phased project for that. And that's all I have to report for now. Wow, that's fantastic. That's yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you, David. All right, and uh, last but not least, as named on the agenda, Cheryl, website. Are you still staying on as website coordinator? Yeah. 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 Sure. Um, unless somebody else would like to take it on, but I, I'm happy to continue. Uh, and I have updated the about us page on the website to reflect uh, Tom and Kevin's uh, positions and in, in, in the um, in our four resignations uh, retirements. Uh, and um, uh, I did, I'm not sure whether if, if Tom and Kevin, if you can check that page, make sure the information is accurate. And also I didn't know what your phone numbers were. I just kind of assumed that they were probably cell phone numbers, but if they're home or office numbers and you want that designation uh, on, the, on the website, let me know and I'll make that adjustment. Um, I did a quick look uh, and I didn't see anything else, although I do owe at least a look at um, her at the um, the inventory page. So I still still have that on my on my list of things to do. Great, wonderful, and thank you for doing that. That's you know it's it's kind of a tedious thing to get all that information together, but it is such a helpful helpful place to send people when they want to know. Uh, what what the commission is doing has done and who's who on the commission. So thanks for that for that Cheryl. All right, anything else before we go on to uh, announcements and adjourn? If we left anything off. I don't see any hands go up, so let's go around and, and oh, talk about other announcements. So Carol, how about we st you're up in the corner of my screen, so we'll, we'll start with you. Anything, any announcements from you? You're muted. Carol, you're muted. You're, there you go. Thank you. Uh, the McLean Historical Society has been around for 30 years and we're having our 30th uh, anniversary uh, next week, next Tuesday at the McLean Community Center. And we'll have several speakers and refreshments and that type of thing. But we've been around for 30 years. That's great. Didn't you have a big deal? Was it for the 20th or the 25th? Where it was like a whole weekend long event? Or am I thinking of something else? Oh, we've never celebrated it through the McLean Historical Society as a anniversary. It's been with okay. other events. We, okay. Yeah. But this is going to be the 30th anniversary celebration. Strictly that. Wonderful. OK. All right, let's see. Um, Tammy, anything from you? We should know about um, I just had uh, I had a great experience last Friday. I had someone from the Thompson family that is important to the Mount Vernon district. Uh, if you all are familiar with Thompson's Dairy which was in D.C. Uh, for a long time, um, they had contacted me. And um, so I gave them a tour of, uh, of River Farm and their um, their family had lived at, um, at Wellington at River Farm and then also next door at Riverview. And so that was kind of cool to hear some of their family stories as we were walking around. But that was just a that was a neat experience. Um, and then I don't know, I will I'll just ask that someone else on the commission who maybe knows more about it talks about um, the book launch for Chris Barbashek and um, Suzanne LaPierre's book. So I hope somebody has more information about that. Why, Tammy, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, as, as Tammy mentioned, on uh, January 9th next week, um, our book that Suzanne and LaPierre and I, we wrote um, over the last two years, it's called the desegregate, what is it, Northern Virginia? I don't even know what the book is called. I have to look it up because uh, they changed it multiple <laughs> times. It's called um, Desegregation in Northern Virginia Libraries. Um, it's being released on the 9th, and we are having a book launch party on Saturday, January 14th at 4 p.m. So if you got nothing else doing that day, come on out and join us. It'll be at the library. Awesome. Thank you. Would you put out a note about that, Chris? Make sure. 
certainly, definitely. OK, copies. That would be fun. That would be fun. Thank you. OK, um, Sally, your hand is up, and I think um, you probably want to talk again about the conference this weekend. Right. As, as Amy told you, uh, the Friends of Fairfax County Archaeology is having their annual meeting this Saturday at 930 in the morning at the James Lee Center in Falls Church. And our own Liz Crowell will be speaking about the post-pandemic archaeology in Fairfax County, a synopsis. So she's bringing us, us up to date on what's going on and how it's being done. So that should be very interesting. So I hope we see you. Great. Thanks, Sally. OK, Anne, anything? No. no. OK, um, we've heard from Chris, Carol, David Meyer, anything else? Um, I just w w wanted to share this with everybody. Um, Lynn and I had talked about <clears throat> the feedback that we had received from everyone, which we greatly appreciate, about the, the, the management of our meetings. And we have heard loud and clear that we're going to do our very best to move these meetings along uh, as, as focused as we can and try to uh, keep them under two hours and preferably even shorter than that. I think this evening we struck a good balance between staying on point and allowing for some exchange of information and perspectives and, and interest, whether it was VRT or uh, the Del Norling School or other issues. And so we're, we're going to continue to be mindful of that. We And we appreciate everyone's forbearance if some of the discussion becomes a little um, extended. But that's our goal. And we want to try and find that sweet spot uh, so that everyone can participate and we can have rich discussions, but do it with some intentionality. Thanks. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support of that, David. All right. Uh, Elise, anything else? Esther? Nothing. OK, Gretchen, I can't see you, all of you. So to un unmute yourself if I call your name and you don't have anything else. Yep. No, I'm good. Thanks. You're good. OK, Janae? Janae, you're muted. Anything else? Um, just briefly, the the book that we've been, I've been working with the descendants of Germantown and also the School Street area. We are in the process of signing the contract with the History Press. So I've got Etta Wilson and I've got Rita Colbert and I've got um, all the other wonderful ladies and I will all be having that book come out. I have to say they wanna put it out next year, the same time that Chris is, his book's coming out this next week, I'm going to see if I can get it moved up to maybe come out in November to see if we can have the book launch to be at the next history conference. Oh, that would be wonderful. The ladies have worked really, really hard on it. And um, it, we're, we're, we're kind of, we're pumped. We're pumped. We're real okay. excited about it. Wonderful. So it'll be on the Black History of Fairfax City. Great. Okay. Wonderful. In time for the conference to be fantastic. Jordan? No, just, send, to, so. just to congratulate uh, you, Lynn, and David on a uh, terrific maiden voyage. <laughs> e <laughs> excellent meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We can do it. We can do it. Um, <laughs> Kevin and Tom, I'm going to end with you. Uh, let's see. Stephanie? Is Stephanie Newman still with us? She's got anything else to say. I'm here. I don't have anything else to say. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for being here, Stephanie. And Cheryl, anything? You know what? I, I, other than uh, Stephanie, I will. Stephanie, I will be meeting about the BRT uh, at Route One as well. You know, we're doing a uh, marker for uh, or some information about historic Huntley. So let's say to that. Outstanding. Okay, Bob Beach. Yeah, yeah, I have a, a, a an idea. I, I, I was trying to say something when you were talking about the school, but I didn't raise my hand, so I just got talked over, but that's okay. I'm going to ask a question. How many have been to the arena stage? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that's a building built around other historic buildings that were preserved. So when it comes to the Don Loring School, they may be able to take part of that building and keep it, restore it, reuse it, and build a whole new mid-rise building around it. And still fit things on the site 
So um, okay. that's that's just a thought, an idea. If you were really wanting to be uh, aggressive about preserving the history of that that school in some fashion, other than a marker or other things that might be um, probably more um, expected. Okay, anyway, that sounds wonderful. Check check in with uh, Ann then and, and advocacy. Maybe they, they would need to know a little bit more about that too, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sally, I uh, think we've already talked to you. Let's see. Tammy, you good? You good? All right. And Steve Sherman, anything you need to add? Okay. Um, Tom and Kevin, thank you for joining us. This was a very good meeting uh, in, in terms of you getting to see like a whole spectrum of the different kinds of areas that, that we work on. Uh, I'm, I'm going to close with a reminder that on the 20th of January from 6 to 730 in the Government Center is Jeff McKay's annual thank you to the county volunteers. And Tom, you and Kevin are most definitely welcome on that. If you've not heard about that, email me and I'll get you more information about that. Uh, it's usually in his uh, kind of weekly newsletter, so 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 check that out. Um, and one last thing, we had uh, Jenna Gilbert here a little little while ago, and as you know, her dad Paul heads up uh, kind of our sister organization, not really underneath the county, but Nova Parks has quite a few properties in in the county. They've just purchased this wonderful or brought into their domain, a place called the Winkler Botanical Preserve in Alexandria. And if you ever get a chance to visit there, it is the greatest little slice of an oasis in, in, in the area. It is just right behind 395. Wonderful history. The Winkler family, mostly boys, one daughter. The boys all developed commercially. The daughter said, no, I'm going to make sure my land stays present for ecological, environmental, and aesthetic purposes. And it is a beautiful, beautiful little park uh, off of Beauregard Street and, and Roanoke. So you get a chance to take a look at that. Please do so. All right, our meeting then next month is the 1st of February. We are at 932. Folks, I want to congratulate you on a meeting uh, well uh, done. And yet I think we discussed uh, a tremendous amount of good, good information. Uh, wish you well. This month, uh, at least continue to get better. I think a few of you also have colds too, so do take good care of yourselves. And uh, it has been an honor and a privilege to work with you this evening. Thank you all very much. All right, adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. There's Thank the sound you, of the gavel. Bye. And we're still well awake. Yes, we know <laughs> about that. Oh, we don't know about Steve. We don't know about Steve though. <laughs> All right. And David, thank you. It's great to have you here in this capacity. OK, well, thank you, everyone, and um, look forward to seeing working with everyone this year. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Bye -bye. Take good care. Bye. 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 Bye.